Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa, and it's time now to lift off the press some of the headlines that are making the rounds. And uh, we will be looking at those headlines, and we have a guest that will be joining us shortly to talk about those headlines. But first, let me just give you some of the headlines, starting with the headlines on uh, the Nature News. Nature News has a lot of uh, things to say, but uh, chief among them is Nigeria's 2025 open defecation free target, Shaky. The riders there are 48 million citizens still practice open defecation, 3.9 million toilets needed annually, uh, according to UNICEF and state governor governments not committed to ODF campaign. Okay, so. And then the only other headline I would like to take from uh, that uh, newspaper is that Amoso wins Stockholm Diamond League. She's doing us proud uh, wherever she goes. Okay, we'll move from uh, Nature News to Business Day. Business Day leads with the story how Nigerian leaders failed to uh, rein in governance costs. How Nigerian leaders failed to rein in governor's cost or governance cost. Um, global race for talent heightens Jakba wave. Okay, that's what they're giving us the reason for the heightened Jakba wave, where everybody's running away. We move to the Guardian now. Uh, that's the third newspaper for today. The Guardian newspaper leads with the story. Tinubu Adamu's Cold War worsens as Akwabio Abbas appoints principal officers. We also have smaller headlines there. Uh, Tinubu Shetima open defense today in OBLP's petition. Imperative of separating AGF from Justice Minister. And then we also have over 400 Kujie escapees yet to be captured one year after prison break. Scary. And uh, a Kano anti-graft panel probes Ganduje dollar clip and one billion naira fraud. Okay, we move from Guardian to the last paper for the day, which is the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with the story. APC protests selection National Assembly members back Akpabu and Abbas. The writers there is selecting Bamidele Ndume Umahi as National Assembly leaders, a rumor. Uh, that's Adamu. Adamu, the, um, the chairman of uh, APC, national chairman, says that. Senators, Revs, support Senate President Speaker, say NWC is aware of the selection. Okay, uh, now, results, uh, results falsification, jam sanctions more candidates. Uh, okay, we have that also on the punch. And uh, I think those are the headlines that we will take from the punch this uh, morning. There are so many others in the course of our discussion, if we can touch on them, we will do that. But we are being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolaoli, who is a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Good Kolaole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, uh, we will be as brief as possible because there are a lot of things to cover. Uh, let's start with nature news. Uh, let's start with nature as it is. Um, there is the talk about open defecation, which has a target of 2025, and they say that it is shaky. Uh, 2025 open defecation free target is shaky, and 48 million citizens still practice open defecation, and 3.9 million toilets needed annually, according to UNICEF. We'd just like to hear your comments on that. Open defecation. Well, honestly speaking, mm. uh, when I go to places like Oshoki, and I see feces in the motor park and by the roadside, I feel embarrassed when I'm also committed from one point to the other, and I see people on the bridges defecating to the Atlantic Ocean, I feel thoroughly embarrassed. And then you also go into some of these neighborhoods, especially the inner recesses of Lagos, 
and most of the Yoruba town, southwest town that I'm very familiar with, you still see people engaging in open identification. And you know what? I have always said it, and uh, this is my humble opinion. When people begin to defecate the way we do it, it means that they are not different from the ordinary animals, the dogs, the goats, and all that. They are just defecating wherever they find themselves. So it means we are still at the very primitive level of the animal when we are unable to manage our waste. And it is not just the defecation alone. You go to most of these places, even though the government has provided those bins and waste uh, bags for people to put their waste, our people will not use those things. When the rain is falling, they gather their waste and throw into the drainage uh, uh, gutters and what have you. At the end of the day, that ends up clogging the drainages and leads to, 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 to all sorts of uh, uh, problems in the communities and all that. So we need to tackle this open defecation um, uh, headlong so that we can have a more congenial environment and also improve on our air because most of the diseases that we have around the tropical area or in Nigeria or in Africa in particular has to do with malaria, has to do with um, and some of these other uh, diseases that come with uh, water, that come with open education, that comes with uh, Unhygienic uh, environment. So, why the local governments, why the state governments in the different parts of the country are not paying attention to this? Baffles me. When we were young as individuals, there were people we call Wole Wole sanitary inspectors mm. who would go around the places and make sure that people are compliant with all the rules and regulations that has to do with hygiene. We also have people from the local government who will go to fumigate all the open drainages and gutters and all that to make sure whatever bacteria, whatever other uh, uh, insects and all that that can cause harm to people, don't get to go in those places. So it is an embarrassment, and it is also something that we should confront headlong so as to be able to meet the United Nations uh, a deadline for eradication of open education in Nigeria and in Africa and the black world as a whole. It's unfortunate that the United Nations will have to be the ones to tell us what to do and uh, prevent ourselves from being sick and all that. But do you think this is a product of a failure in um, a product of a culture of failure in governance? Because you talked about uh, the, is it a Luole you call them, the sanitary inspectors. I grew up also knowing them, uh, but over time they have disappeared. What do you think that can be done to get this message down to the people to change the psyche of the people regarding their personal hygiene? Well, I wouldn't say it's a culture. I think it's a stage of a development. Even when you look at the Caucasian race and all that, uh, the Chinese and then the Japanese and all that, at one time or the other, they also have done open educations in their respective uh, societies and what have you. But as societies develop, people will find better and more hygienic ways of disposing their waste and all that. Incidentally, that is the whole do we as a race, the black people and Nigerians in particular, have not been able to cross. And we are unable to cross it simply because our politicians, uh, the allies are not paying attention to those things. And even look at the kind of, most of the things that we pay attention to is all about politics and about to know how to make money. We think we have not been considering some of these things as very, very important in our lives and all that. The local government that is directly charged with those responsibilities by the Nigerian constitution. Another instant loss of the land. The local governments are dead all over the country. The governors have killed them. The local government is just merely a salary paying uh, or a call center all over the country and all that. So we need to revive the local government, charge them with the responsibility that they ought to be carried, and also empower them to discharge those uh, responsibilities. Things like uh, waste disposal, Things like uh, signage, things like uh, street lights, things like market, things like uh, motor parks and all that. They are directly under the local government and all that. But which local government has the wherewithal, has the resources to perform those functions today? So it's not about culture. It's about lack of paying attention to some of those things. The cost of the average Nigerian airlines and politicians, they are immaterial. It's not a place that you can turn in or make a billions of naira when you are world contacts and what have you. So they are not concerned. 
since they are well off in themselves, they have water closets and all manners of uh, jacuzzis with which they dispose and manage their waste. Okay, uh, well, let's move to the Guardian newspaper. There's a, a headline in the Guardian newspaper, Tinubu Adamo's Cold War worsens as Akbabio Abbas appoints principal um, officers. Uh, Cold War, they called it. I'm sure it's from the time of the primaries. You remember that the chairman of APC anointed a candidate and said that was the chosen candidate who eventually did not win, and that was uh, the then uh, Senate President Ahmed Lawan. And now... They are describing this as Cold War between Adamu and uh, Tinubu. So there obviously is a crack in the APC. And um, I don't know uh, how you feel about what is going on in APC. The people have chosen their well, principal I, leaders and they, why it, should the chairman is coming? saying no. We should have seen it uh, coming. It should be, I mean, it is uh, expected. If you are a good reader of uh, what is happening in the political level, uh, a terrain. But let me take our minds back to, to the Second Republic, when we have the Unity Party of Nigeria, the NRC, and some of those things. And all. Those times, it is the party that decides who occupy what uh, offices, especially at the National Assembly, and who gets appointed as, um, as minister. In fact, immediately they win elections, the party leaders will consult with all the people who won elections and sit down, and then follow whatever guidelines, whatever zoning formula that they have put in place to be able to get uh, some of these um, a position of field as soon as uh, they settle that. I know if once they zone a party chairman to one zone, they never zone the speaker or the senate president to that zone again uh, and all that. But you see, since we arrive at this, uh, this third or fourth republic uh, in 1999, that has never been the case uh, with our politics. You find out that the man who is governor wants to dominate and ensure it is only his yes men who occupy all the other strategic positions within the party hierarchy and the structure. If it is at the national level, the president will also want to dictate and uh, enforce and impose whoever is going to occupy some of these strategic positions, whether at the National Assembly, whether as ministers, whether as a party structure. It is a way by which they control the party structures and all that, the machinery of, uh, of the state. And you will remember, if you cast your mind back, there has been a fall, I mean, there has been um, a war as regards who occupies uh, the position of party chairman and some of the Senate president and speaker of the other, and some of these other very vital positions there before. We were told, or we had in those days, that um, Adam Social Money was the candidate of Ashwati Bola Ahmed Tinubu as a party chairman. And then somehow he got removed and some of these other parties and, uh, and uh, Adamo, who is said to be the chairman of a president, I mean the candidate of President Muhammad Buhari is occupying the post. So if Ashwaji is going to be able to capture the party structure and dominate the party and impose himself or insist to be the party leader and what have you, what we are seeing in the APC now should be uh, expected. The president will want to dominate or capture that area too by removing uh, Adamu. And uh, the fact that most of the principal officers of the National Assembly, as we have been told from the grapevine, were unpicked by the president. Uh, chances are that those people who have been unpicked and who are said to have um, uh, now won the elections and other will not have the respect for the party chairman and also the National WC, NWC, that is the working committee of the APC and also uh, whatever structures that they have in there. So it's a cold war that has always been there. Maybe it's now want to become a very uh, hot war. But the truth of the matter is that um, from my experience since 1999, whoever is president will want the party chairman on all the very strategic positions within the structure of the party and also want to dominate the National Assembly. And if it's at state level, they also want to dominate the state assembly and then uh, appoint all the commissioners and what that. And the same thing is also happening at the local government uh, uh, level. I hope they'll be able to manage it so that it doesn't um, uh, become a blowout and begin to distract the new government and then begin to distract the president, especially with his capacity to be able to deliver for the dividend of democracy. There is very, very serious problem in the land with regards to unemployment, 
with regard to this removal of petroleum subsidies, with regard to high inflation, with regard to the dilapidated infrastructure, with regard to low construction. Look at the Lagos by the way. We have been on that for almost 20 years now, and we are able to finish 100 kilometers of road with, I mean, within the space of 20 years. When a country like China, a country like Japan and all that, are now building roads under the ocean, and they complete it seamlessly. Uh, well, I don't know how this fight is going to, to end. The rough or rough, as we call it, uh, is going to end. Because if you look at the National Assembly, the number of people who now wear the signature hat of uh, the president <laughs> is quite much, which means he has a lot of boys and girls in the National Assembly. If you see this, the, the cap that he wears with the eight uh, inscribed on it, a lot of them now wear it to show that they are uh, Tinubu's boys. I don't know how Adamu wants exactly. to win this, win this case. I don't know. But let me, let me move to another thing. You are a lawyer, and some people are advocating uh, separating the, uh, the office of AGF from justice minister. What is your take? Well, that is non-negotiable. If we are going to have a stable justice sector, a responsive justice sector, a justice sector that is not uh, susceptible to political influences and, and domination and war about. The office of the AGF and that of Minister of Justice must be separated. You and I do know that it is the president that will appoint the justice minister, who also acts as the attorney general of the federation. The person who appoints will automatically be dictating and calling the shots and dictating the truth and war about. And that is the challenge that we had under President Muhammad Bukhari in which uh, the AGF can just decide, uh, I'm not going to prosecute this thing for corruption, this party for corruption, simply because it's a member of our political party, or uh, government, uh, people will get um, judgment against the government, and then the government and the attorney of the federation will refuse to pay, because it sees as an embarrassment uh, on the government, in which he is, uh, is a minister, and what happens. And they also see, that those who combine these two offices and all that have over the years been abusing uh, those offices in favor of their political parties and in favor of those who appointed them. And that has not allowed for speedy dispensation of justice and also for a equitable um, a justice system and also for a fair and uh, holistic uh, approach to justice uh, a dispensation in the country. I'll give you one example. A lot of Nigeria have been clamoring that we should kind of uh, unbundle our court system in Nigeria. Let the local government have their own court. Let the state have their own court, magistrate court, court of appeal, customary court, and also Supreme Court. And let the federal government also have their own Supreme Court, and also their own court of appeal, and then the high court in the respective places and all that. So things on the exclusive legislative list can be handled by courts that belong to the federal government. And things on the non exclusive legislative list can be handled by the state courts and what have you. And then things that are common to the two of them can be handled by either of the parties. And then sometimes we will allow litigants to select in which court they want to be tried. It is a fear that uh, a court may be used against them or they may be particular in one court or that one party or the other has influence in one court and what have you. For example, in matters that have to do with life imprisonment, in matters that have to do with death sentences and all that, or long imprisonment and whatever, litigants or defendants should be able to decide, I want to be tried in the federal court so as to have a fair trial, or I want to be tried in the, uh, the, uh, the state court so that we could have a fair trial. Without this, without having, without separating the office of the Minister of Justice and that of Attorney General, we will not be able to do this on bonding of the court because a lot of our people would rather prefer to sit on a dead horse than ride or mount on a gallop hill. Most of the attorney general and of justice see themselves sitting on these two offices and other as the trapping of the office, as a show off, as a something that would diminish their powers if uh, the two offices are separated. And it's for that reason that uh, we require to prevail and uh, put pressure on President Bola Ahmed Sinubu to do this, uh, this, this um, separation of the office of our from that of Minister of Justice, 
so that our will of justice can run smoothly, fastly, expeditiously, and uh, holistically without uh, heading to a mishap. Okay, that just reminds me of what happened in 2015 or so when uh, the ministers were being, the list was being sent to the National Assembly for uh, scrutiny. And the ministers were facing the panel, the, the National Assembly panel. And one of these uh, ministers to be was, I think, Festus Kayamo. And they were interviewing him as someone who is a lawyer by profession. He talked about unbundling of this justice system and all that. He was talking like a lawyer about, lo and behold, he was given something else. And that's why we've always called on, uh, on this program, on this station, that next time they are doing, they're sending lists to the National Assembly, they should send lists according to the likely portfolio the people will handle. So that if I'm interviewing a lawyer for a prospective position as a Minister of Justice, I should know the questions to ask him and see how his mind works. Not when I talk to a lawyer, see how the lawyer's mind works. I you go and give him a Minister for Agriculture, where some of them, after handing over, will now say they had no idea. Like the Minister of Education said, he had no idea at all about how to administer uh, in, that office, in that office or in that capacity. They should send this list People who should be ministers for X, Y, Z should be people that uh, have some knowledge in X, Y, Z so that when people are talking to them, Nigerians will begin to know and see how they can help them as well and see where they can suggest the areas of growth and all that and see how their mind works from the get-go. And I don't know. But this, I think, should be one of the things that should be done. Let the National Assembly meet with these people according to the kind of portfolio they are likely to have. Whether you're going to be the minister or minister of state, for whatever you're going to be, let the National well, Assembly also know. That's, that's what we've always been saying. Let me interject over there. What you have said is a very desirable thing. Uh, it's a very desirable thing. It has its own advantage. But I must also say that it has its own disadvantages. Which First, is? when you look around the world, it is not just in Nigeria alone that people who have no experience in one area are made to kind of a man uh, an area in which they have uh, no expertise. You go to Britain, you go to America and other people are sometimes having the responsibility of a portfolio that they know little or nothing about. There are some merit or advantages in that. They can bring the experience they have in some other places and um, infuse it or inject it, or use it to tackle whatever problem they, have, uh, they, 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 they may have in the new office that they have been posted. Also remember that when Chivaruma was made the Minister of Finance, under the governor's position, he was a lawyer, he was, he was practicing as a lawyer, he wasn't a finance person at all, even though he had, read, he had a bachelor of commerce uh, before he went to read the uh, uh, law. And I also remember that when the career of uh, this Singapore and all that wanted to revolutionize uh, his country, he brought people from different places. He even took uh, a businessman to go ahead the Supreme Court uh, because he said uh, most of the judges and lawyers in the country are people who have no value for time, for money, and the uh, citizenship of justice. And the man he put in the Supreme Court was able to restructure that place and then the justice system began to move um, uh, the way it should uh, move in that uh, country. The truth of the matter is that when you are in government uh, or in the ministry, there are all manners of expertise in there within which you can, um, uh, you can uh, manage uh, those uh, ministries and all that. Yeah, but, and but, again, but our, experience, our experience with the, the Minister of for Education... The, 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 the night does not sharpen itself. Our experience Most with the time. Minister of Education uh, was not really palatable enough because uh, after his tenure, yeah, he now said he had palatable. no idea. The experts, where were the experts at that time? He was a journalist. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, okay. So I, I get your point. I get your point. Um, yeah. Another scary thing uh, that I've seen is f uh, 400 Kuje escapees yet to be captured one year after prison break. 
these people went to prison. There was a prison break. They were at large, and they have not been able to capture 400 of them. And we've always known that these people, a lot of times when they recapture them, they are recapturing them while committing another crime. So what does that mm. speak to you? Does it not scare you? Well, uh, it's uh, rather unfortunate. Why do I say it's unfortunate? The difficulties in capturing them has to do with lack of a proper uh, documentation. Mm. In some countries of the world, once you have been convicted like that, your fingerprints will be taken, the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, of your hair, uh, and all manners of uh, documentation. Right from the time of your arrest, and to the time of conviction. And then we also get to prison, a lot of documentation will also be done in there. So if you are unable to capture these people, first and foremost, it has to do with the documentation. Again, it's, uh, the challenge in there is that of, uh, of uh, security in most of uh, the, the, the prisons uh, all over the country. Uh, a lot of laxity here and there, a lack of equipment, you can imagine. In some of these places where the jailbreak was said to have taken place, there were no even CCTV camera to monitor what is happening inside the prison and outside uh, the prison uh, 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 environment. So we need to plug uh, all those uh, areas. Uh, let me remind you that Nigeria is not the only place that prison um, jailbreaks uh, take place. If you read some of these uh, stories from some other countries of the world, you will marvel the ingenuity that uh, prisoners deploy when they want to engage in jailbreak. I mean jailbreak. I have read in some places in which the ordinary spoon that prisoners are allowed to use to eat their food, they use it to dig the wall, to break, the, to 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 cut a hole in the wall over a period of time on the floor of the prison, and through those floors they 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 they, they escape or even go to the rooms of. Uh, or to the cell of another inmate and go in there to, 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 to kill them. Uh, that is one area. Secondly, the horrendous suffering that prisoners uh, go through in our prisons in terms of feeding, in terms of uh, uh, clothing, in terms of uh, wearing apparel, in terms of even sleeping arrangement, in terms of medications and all that, will make an average um, a prisoner to be desperate to escape from some of those places. Even though on a daily basis, thousands of naira are, are, are budgeted for feeding of the prisoners and others. When you get in there, the means that they get is only up to 100 naira or 200 naira uh, per plate. And then you begin to ask yourself, where does all this uh, prison uh, money going to? Also look at the congestion in our prison. The interior minister that just left the place and all that address alarm, not uh, before he, he left the offices that the prisons are too congested and that we need to build them more prison and that the federal government should not be feeding most of the prisoners in the prison because they are prisoners. They are, they are people who have been sent to the prison by the state uh, uh, government and also the local government and all that. And I thought that the state government should start building their own prison uh, in conjunction with the local government so that we could have a more uh, congenial or more conducive environment uh, within uh, uh, the prison. So there's a lot of problem in there, and uh, we are not addressing those problems. When Nobatunjo was there, or when he came back from prison, he said he had seen the condition of the prison, and I was going to look into all those challenges. But all the SCR that he spent in power, he never addressed any of the problems that we have in the prison. And all that. So the prison is supposed to be a correctional center. It is not meant to be a place to destroy, or kill, or maim any of the people that have been sent in there. But our prisoner is not reformatory. It's a kind of a, a butcher or an apatua for destroying most of the people that are sent in there. Mm. I tell you, um, prison conditions are not good. If, if you go there for administration of any kind to, to do fellowship of exactly. any kind, you will find out they mm. are nothing to write home about. I, I know that somebody exactly. who exactly. goes to prison is supposed to pay for a crime, but the unfortunate thing is that more than 50% of these people in prison may even just be awaiting trial. 
and that means it's, it's tied to the justice system and all that. What, just walk us through the process. What makes it so difficult for these awaiting trial inmates to get the judgment that they deserve to either go to prison or be freed? Just tell us what the process is like that makes yes. it so cumbersome. There are very simple, very simple. There is a complaint to the police by citizens. Mm. Sometimes the police are by the roadside and they do a stop and search and find that people have committed a crime. Mm. And then people are taken to the charge room. From the charge room, the police do their investigations. And if they feel that certain persons have a question to answer, or that there is a need to prosecute such persons and others, they go and arrange them either in the magistrate court or in the high court, or in the federal high court or state high court uh, all over the country and northern. And then uh, they are um, put to trial, and then uh, either convicted or discharged and all that. The process of trial, I mean, the problem starts right from the police station and all that. Most times, some of the cases that uh, go to the police station, ordinarily should have been resolved at the level of the police station without taking the person to court. I give you an example. I have seen a situation in which a lady was taken to court for allegedly stealing a 3,000 naira uh, answer. Mm. And the person who accused this person of stealing the 3,000 naira uh, took this lady home, uh, slept with her, instead of paying the prescribed fee that the lady said she wanted, he didn't pay the fees and all that. And so when the lady was leaving in the morning, took the man's answer and went away with it. And because the man, the security man, was able to track the lady and then fish out the lady and then um, uh, took the lady to a master court where the lady was prosecuted. To get the lady out of the prison and get her discharged and all that took about uh, almost two years and all that. So if you ask me, this is the kind of case that should have been resolved mm -hmm. at the level of the police station. So you find most of these cases go to for trial in the master court and high court that ordinarily shouldn't be there. That one, that is one of the reasons that is responsible for the congestion in the prison. Because until their trials are over, or until uh, the court dispenses their trial and all that, the people will remain in prison. Again, too, the compassion bail procedure in our different courts is also responsible for the awaited trial challenges that we have in there. In some countries of the world, bail procedures are even used as a weapon or as a means of making money by the government. They ask the, the defendant to post a bond of so so amount of money and that if uh, you escape or if you don't return to face your trial and all that, you will pay this so so amount um, of government. Sometimes even as I say, look, if you don't want to go to prison, you want to be enjoying your freedom before your trial is um, uh, concluded, you are going to pay this amount of uh, money and all that. We don't have that procedure in India. The third area is that uh, most times the requirement for bail in Nigeria is very, very cumbersome. Is and bail they not free? And bring landed property. Is bail somebody not free? Somebody has a fee of a property. They say somebody is a director or a high civil servant in some of these places and all that. And uh, it may take time before you get somebody who has a fee of a property in certain particular locations to come and uh, process your pay or somebody is a director in the ministry to come and process your pay. We are at, bail is supposed to be as liberal as, uh, as possible. Because anybody standing trial, he still remains a mere suspect. And there is a presumption of innocence uh, for those persons. So we don't require to begin to put obstacles on their way to be able to process their bail and then begin to come from their respective home um, to face their trial or uh, do their defense. Lastly, our courts are congested. The courts are not enough. I will just give the Lagos State as an example. We are told that um, the population of Lagos is about 25 million people. And when you have a population of 25 million people, I am not too sure that we have up to 1,000 courts in Lagos State, both the customary court, the master court, and the high court. So if 25 million people are to access the, the, the court processes and all that, you will realize it's going to be a bed lab in uh, those places. Uh, as of today, people will come from Ikotu Ekbe to do their case at Ogba. At a time, 
can see that happen in uh, Victoria Island and in uh, Lekki. We are going to expect to do those cases and Nora. That is the cost. That is a combustion. Very, very strange of uh, what happened. So we need to have more courts, okay. appoint more judges, more masses, mm. more court presidents all over the places. And that also has to do with the unbundling of the court processes that we are talking about. Okay. If Lagos, for example, is going to create more high courts, it has to go to the NJC in Abuja to take permission all right. to be able to create a high court, even when there is a demand for it. And most of you they put in an application to create a more icon. Somebody in Jigawa or Safara State can say, ah, we too must create a more icon because revenue is going to be coming from uh, the federal government to sustain those icons. They see it as Let's a kind of uh, up, yes. opportunity to attract the revenue rather than based on the needs, the exigencies of what is happening in the respective state of the federation and all that. Okay. Of, of course. Not enough money is also being put into the judiciary. So infrastructure is also very deplorable. Judges have to sit on about 30, 30 cases in a day, and then they process. Life will be taken away. There will be no power All right. to light the court and provide a fee. The simple material, yeah? like paper, sometimes are not available. The courtrooms are congested and dirty in some states. Okay, I see. I, I see how. I see what the so problem is now. So of uh, problems all over the place. Yeah, I see. I see what the problem is now. But I do hope that something mm. will be done because I've had that experience yeah. going to minister in a prison, and the the state of things that I saw was terrible. How they feed, how they're taken care of, it was terrible. And that story is replicated everywhere uh, that we're talking about prisons or correctional centers in Nigeria. We do hope that something will be done so that people who are innocent stay innocent. Some people who are guilty then stay inside as the prisoners. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Kolaole, for coming on the show this morning and for your thoughts on the headlines. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We've been talking with Mr. Wish you a lovely day. You too. We've been talking with Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. The state is still breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's a midweek frenzy. And we'll take this short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Stay with us.